So after the investigation, we have found out that we have a burn main contactor and we changed that one. And then there's a reason why the main contactor got burned. So we need to do a further investigation for that one. So I have found out that the variable frequency drive is shorted. So uh, I'm still not that satisfied with the variable frequency drive. I'm suspecting maybe there is a problem with the motor. That's why the variable uh, frequency drive got shorted. So I still move to another checking, which I check the motor and the motor is in good condition. Before I join, we already have this motor trouble in the one of the engine room fans so we have five fans and as of now only three are running so we need to keep at least this number five running and to be able to do that we need to make a modification on the wiring diagram by by passing the uh, VFD so uh, I'm also planning to um, post the wiring diagram Then, if you want you can do your own modification and after that Let's compare whatever I did on the modification which I submitted. So if you want to have an actual troubleshooting by your own, I will, just like what I have said, I will post the wiring diagram, do your own modification, and then let's compare it. At least I hope you will learn from this. So we have a burnt BFT and we need to bypass it so that we will be able to run the motor. So it means that we need to connect the input and output of the BFD all the way to the motor. And since we are removing the BFD, then we need to remove all the connections on our circuit diagram. This is actually the fastest way which I believe this modification will become a lot easier. Of course, removing all the connections from the BFD, then a lot of circuits will get affected. Since I always do the conventional way of troubleshooting, I also apply it in reading wiring diagrams. In which I start from the supply all the way to the load. And in this circuit, there is no controlling contacts on the main contactor 88. So this will be the main goal of our modification. For us to be able to find what will be the controlling contact for the main contactor 88, then we need to push the start button and see what will happen to the circuit. And 3C is the start button. And the current will flow actually all the way to the breakage of the lines. As to this condition, the K2 contact number 31 will remain open since the K2 relay is deactivated. Of course, we need to find out what is the main function of the relay K2. And as per the manual, it has three main contacts contacts for terminal 21 24 31 34 and on the next page which is for the abnormal alarm which means if k2 is deactivated you will have an active abnormal alarm on the ams so i have just decided to connect directly the other line onto the A1 of the K2 to keep it activated and clear the abnormal alarm on the AMS. In this setup, all the normally open K2 contacts will be closed and the abnormal alarm will be cleared. Another relay that is affected from the removal of our BFD connections is the K3 relay. And the main function of the K3 relay is also controlling contacts for 4C and 4 and for the remote 
operation. So I have decided to tap it directly also to the terminal X11. And once K3 is also activated, then we will have a closed circuit for the 4C and it will be activated. And having an activated 4C contactor, then the number 4 contactor will also be activated. So the number 4 contactor main function is to give an indication that our motor is actually running. So I have decided that I will make the number 4 contactor contacts to control our number 88 main contactor. That every time we push the start button, then the number 4 will be the start contactor to actually control the main contactor number 88. So I will cut the line in between the number 88 and all the way to the main line and then put one normally open contact from the number 4 contactor. So in this way, we have now a controlling contact for our main contactor that will run our main motor. And of course, we still have the K1 relay that needs a controlling circuit that will give an indication that our system is really running. So I have decided to put another normally open contact from our number 4 contactor. So in this way, the system is giving an indication that our system is actually running. And the counter will also be activated whenever the K1 is activated. So in this setup, we were able to satisfy the circuit and the motor is running in this operation once we press the start button. And this operation applies on the local operation and through AMS. And now the most important part is that once we press the stop button, the system should also stop. And we need to verify this by actually analyzing the circuit. So once we press the stop button, the number 5 relay will be activated and all the normally closed contact from the number 5 will open, deactivating the number 4 and 4C contactor. Of course, all the normally opened from the number 4 contactor will now be opened the K1 will be deactivated and the indication light will now be deactivated. The running counter will also be deactivated since the K1 is now deactivated. And the most important is that the one that we put number 4 contact will be opened and the main contactor 88 will also be deactivated stopping our main motor. So this is now the new wiring diagram that we will apply onto our system. So for those who made their own wiring modification, feel free to comment your new wiring diagram into my Lucky Jake Facebook page so that we can compare ours. And I hope you learned something from this video and please do not forget to hit the subscribe button for more ETO updates. See you on my next video.